Hello, I'm Greg Jamian, and welcome to Home Health Care Corner. As more people receive their medical services and care at home, there are many questions that pop up that sometimes require quick answers. I have put together a series of short segments with healthcare professionals that will help explain how things work along with answers to common questions found in home-based care. I hope you find the following information helpful. Lisa and I'm a registered nurse with the Maris staff and today we're here to talk about nebulizer machines and the proper use and cleaning of your of your nebulizer. Nebulizers are um, used for any type of respiratory ailments such as um, cystic fibrosis, um, pneumonia or COPD, any any respiratory illness that's diagnosed by a physician because you need a prescription to get the, um, the nebulizer machine and the medication that goes in it. So with me today I have Corey and he's one of our technicians that works for um, Sun Medical and he's the one that will come out to your house and set up your nebulizer machine. So Corey, can you tell me when you go out what you teach the patients and how you set the machine up? I should I do? I sure will. I, I you know I teach them how to use the machine properly. If it's not used properly, it's not going to work. Um, it's a one button operation. You turn here's the switch up here. Turn on and off. There's also a filter on the side of the machine that you're going to want to check. De depend how many times a day you got to do your treatments. That depends on how you check the filter. So. The next question is, how do you know when you need a new filter? When it gets brownish, very dark, call your provider where you get it from, have them send you out an another filter, okay. okay? And then the filter goes right on the side here, just like so, okay? So like I said, it all varies on how many times a day that you do it, is that's when you check the filter. Okay. So for example, if you do it three times a day, check it once a week, okay? okay? Um, that's pretty much it on the machine. It's pretty self-explanatory when you turn it on and off. Um, and that's how the machine works. Okay. And then how do you put all the accessories together? The accessories the come in, in a sterile bag, okay? So when you get ready to do your treatments um, for your first time, then it's in a bag, you take it out of the bag. Um, <clears throat> there's also, a, you never, there's tubing that, that comes in all the packages. The one thing you never want to do to the tubing is wash it, okay? Um, you never want to wash it because the water will never get out of it and bacteria start growing in the tubing, okay? Um, and I always instruct both of these ends are the same ends, so it doesn't matter which end you use in the machine or the bottom of the cup to do your treatments, okay? okay? And how you assemble the cup, there's different parts of the cup. You got your top part to where your, your, your uh, mouthpiece goes, you got a baffle that looks like a mushroom. If this isn't in the, in the cup when you do your treatments, you're not going to get a treatment. This has to be in a cup at all times. Okay. And then you have the bottom part where you put your medicine in. Okay. So you put your medicine in, okay, your baffle. Should, can we do that? Sure. Can we like set it up, put the medication? Sure. Okay. So, um, so you would teach the patients that they need to take a, one of their little vials here, their ampule, and we're gonna squeeze all of this medication in there, and then to Corey put on, what was the next part you put You're on? You're gonna put on the baffle, it's called. Okay. This is what pr produces the steam you see coming out of the right. cup. And then you're gonna put your top part onto the cup. You know, you don't have to go real fast with it. Okay. And then you're gonna put your tea in, okay? The T goes right on top, okay? And then you're gonna put the other end of the tubing underneath the cup, and then when you're ready to start your treatments, you just hit the on button. Okay. When you hit the on button, you see the smoke come out. That's when you start your treatment. Okay, and you're gonna to wanna to leave that in your mouth the whole entire time of the, the whole treatment. Entire time. Inhaling, yeah. not using, not breathing through your nose, but only through your mouth? Yes. 
and then when the steam is done, when then the you know that done. your treatment's done. The treatment's all done. Okay. Okay. And the reason for um, the vapor, as opposed to uh, taking a medication or even an inhaler, is that um, the vapor is dispersed to your bronchioles and to your lungs and opens your airway quicker. And that's for um, patients who need um, continuous, who need um, uh, air exchange quicker. Um, so again, that's a prescription from your physician as well as the medication and um, the amount, uh, how often you're gonna use it each day. And then when the patient no longer needs it, what do they do if, when their doctor tells them they don't need to use their machine anymore? They can just put it away. Okay, put is it that- Put back in a box and put it away. Okay, so that's not something the company's gonna come pick up and take back? It depends if it's a rental or purchase. Okay, and then again, insurance covers it, Yes. This. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, and then one other thing we're going to talk about, um, in addition to using uh, the nebulizer machine, your physician may also order an inhaler for you, or you may only use an inhaler. They also call this uh, rescue inhaler or rescue breather because it's for um, life-threatening um, like anaphylaxis, if you have a peanut allergy or a bee allergy, um, this is something that your physician would prescribe to you. Now there's some misconceptions that people have about using the inhaler is um, a lot of people, most people who use an inhaler do not get the full amount because they're using it inaccurately. So when you take the, the cap off of it, you're gonna shake the inhaler and you wanna put your mouth on on here before you squeeze it. A lot of people squeeze it and they're putting their mouth on at the same time. Now there's gonna be, when you do squeeze it and you'll see the puff of vapor come out, there's a little chamber in here that's gonna hold that vapor in for a few seconds. It's gonna give you a chance to take a nice deep breath and then exhale and then as soon as you squirt, you're going to want to inhale as deep as you possibly can, hold your breath for a few seconds, and then repeat if that's what your physician has ordered for you to do twice. When you're done using this, you're going to take an alcohol pad and you need to clean this. An alcohol pad around the mouthpiece, you can go inside the mouthpiece a little bit can wipe the exterior part of the um, device. And also the actual piece that goes over top of the mouthpiece, you can clean with alcohol or you could also wash this with warm, uh, warm water and soap. Let this air dry and then you're gonna put this back on. In addition to that, you also um, need to rinse your mouth after with water. If you don't rinse your mouth, the medication can stay on your tongue and you can develop thrush, which we all know babies that um, have had thrush. It's that white coating. That's why it's very important to rinse your mouth and spit after use. Corey, do you have anything else to add? I do. Uh, the proper cleaning techniques on your nebulizer cup after each treatment. Uh, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna take all the pieces apart, like when you put it together, and you're gonna soak all the parts including the baffle into it and you're going to take out the baffle and you're going to undo the tubing from the bottom and it's very important after each use all four of these pieces get washed with warm soapy water. Put it on a piece of towel and paper let it air dry. Don't wipe it because the fibers from the paper towel and the towel will get into your lungs through the, through the breathing treatments. You don't want that to happen. You want them to air dry. Mm -hmm. Okay, if it's still a little wet for your next treatment, it's okay. At the end of the night, you're gonna do the same thing. Wash with warm soapy water, rinse it. Then you're gonna soak it in three quarters cups of water and a quarter cup of vinegar for about 20 minutes. Rinse it and let it air dry for the night. And then next morning, you repeat the same steps on it. Okay, so then just always remember the baffle goes in, medication, Screw the top on, okay? The mouthpiece, and then put the tubing underneath here, and then put it right back in your machine, and then never ever wash the tubing, okay? Okay, that's daily cleaning. Is there any additional cleaning? Nope, that's daily cleaning. Do? That'll okay. keep all the bacteria away. All right, wonderful. 
Okay, um, if you have, you have anything else to add to that? Nope, that, that's okay. the proper use of a nebulizer. All right, well, thank you, Corey, so much for being here with us today You're to welcome. demonstrate what you do every day. If you have any further questions, you can call Amira staff at 248-288-2270. Thank you. Mm -hmm.